Hello out there. I'm here once again on Indigenous Hands, the Indigenous Voices, which is brought to you by Save the Deaf and Endangered Languages Initiative. I'm here to um, continue our discussion that I started last week on the sign language situations in Africa. And I say that um, we're going to be taking the African countries one after the other, discussing the sign language uh, situation in those countries. And I said, I'm not going to be starting with um, Nigeria because that is where my work is based. Um, possibly I'm going to discuss it last or towards the end of this series, which is going to last for a very, very long time. And I also said, um, um, I'm not going to be discussing a lot of um, Ghana, but I want to start with Ghana today. Um, and I'm going to start by looking at the briefly the sign language situation in Ghana. And I must warn you, <laughs> we um, are going to be hearing a lot of um, Ghana uh, sign language situation in Ghana here, just like we've heard briefly um, from um, my friend and colleague, Mary Edward. Um, soon she's going to continue her series. But I want to touch on the sign language situation in Ghana also to uh, buttress a point in this particular um, series. So today, um, I'm going to be looking at the two sign language, two most popular sign languages in Ghana. I we are aware that there are others that are not as popularly known as the um, Adamarobe sign language and the Ghanaian Sign Language. Um, also, uh, we are aware that several scholars have um, looked at the sign languages in Ghana, especially these two sign languages, Adam Robert Sign Language and um, Ghanaian Sign Language. So we have people like um, um, Nancy uh, Friesberg, we have uh, Victoria Nist, um, people like um, Annelies Costas, and our own Mary Edward, they have all looked at the sign language situation and they are currently looking at the sign language situation in Ghana. And um, from the several studies, we are aware that the two most popular sign languages in Ghana are the Adamarobe sign language, which is an indigenous sign language, and the um, foreign-based sign language, which is the Ghanaian sign language. And I know you know that um, Adam Robert Sign Language is known for its abbreviation ADASL. And uh, Ghanaian Sign Language is known for its abbreviation GSL. All right. Um, Adam Robert Sign Language is an indigenous sign language of deaf um, community in Ghana. And it is a language of a, a defined deaf community known for its genetic high occurrence of deafness. That is a known thing from um, previous discussions from Mary Edward um, and other studies that are so much available there. So we know that um, people living in that community had and possibly still have a high occurrence of deafness, so much that both deaf and hearing people use sign language at, you know, approximately same fluency or proficiency. Um, we also know that both deaf and hearing children, they grow up to acquire the sign language from their parents and uh, also from the community. And but upon this, we know that ADSL is an endangered sign language today by every indication of um, uh, endangerment of you know, language. It is an endangered sign language. All right. Um, the second one is the Ghanaian sign language, which is a language that resulted from the impact of deaf education. And um, it was um, as a result of the arrival of um, Dr. Andrew Foster in, in Ghana in 1957. Of course, you know that this particular topic I'm discussing is going to be mentioning Andrew Foster again and again and again because there's hardly any way you talk about sign language situation and deaf education in African countries without having to deal with Dr. 
Andrew Foster. Okay, um, so Ghanaian Sign Language emerged as um, a result of the visit or the arrival of um, Dr. Foster. And I want to um, point out what Kiaga Moore said, Kiaga and Moore, 2004. They suggest that these two uh, schools for the deaf that Andrew Foster established in as soon as he arrived, he said they used um, a sign language that is regarded to as ASL with English-based signs. So when Foster came to Ghana, he established two schools for the deaf, and um, they are among the popularly known schools for the deaf in Ghana today. And um, you can find this in any study that talks about sign language and deaf community in Ghana. And it is recorded that those two schools um, used a sign language that is first regarded as a language having ASL um, structure or ASL um, vocabulary based and a combination of English structure. So the schools were reported to have used a sign language that was best described by Kiaga Amo as a product of ASL, a product of American Sign Language with English structure or with English-based signs as they use the word. And um, they, the schools may have been the first in West and Central Africa to have used any form of manual communication that is referred to as that. Remember before this time, Adam Robe's sign language had been there. And according to um, many studies about Adam Robe's sign language, the sign language had been in existence as long as and as, as far as anybody can remember. That means they are as old possibly as the um, deaf community. And the deaf community started coming into um, um, historical limelight around the um, 1700s. So it, is, it was a long time before the emergence of Ghanaian Sign Language in possibly around 1957, 58, and all the way to 60. And so we started hearing that. But at the end of the day, um, the product of that sign language today is what we have as Ghanaian Sign Language. All right. Um, today, we still have Adamrobe Deaf Village, and we still have Adamrobe um, Sign Language and because of its level of development before the emergence of Ghanaian Sign Language and because of the genetic nature of the sign language, we believe is one of the reasons that ADSL has not totally um, disappeared, giving way to um, the Ghanaian Sign Language to dominate. And a lot of studies have suggested that today, um, the Ghanaian Sign Language is what is used for deaf education, is what is used amongst deaf people in the urban um, space, um, while ADSL is still being used um, by many deaf that live in that um, deaf community, even though, um, according to studies uh, by Mary Edward, that government policies and other cultural and emergent um, developmental factors are weighing hard on the sign language, trying to prohibit the existence, the continued existence of the of the community by um, stopping the reproduction, continued reproduction of deaf children and deaf people. You can find a lot of that in the works of Mary Edward. Um, so, but the question I I want to close with today is, what will be the implication? of the, the disappearance, possible disappearance of a Adamrobe sign language in Ghanaian deaf community. What will be its implication for the deaf children? What will be its implication for the deaf people at large? And uh, this question is coming from 
the fact that we are aware that every study we have seen and had suggests that bilingualism is much better than monolingualism. And if, if Ghana is a country today that has deaf community, that has two major sign languages, one indigenous, the other one um, conventional or foreign based, and possibly other sign languages that are not as, stud as well studied as these other two, and um, the others are disappearing, giving way for the foreign based. What is going to be the future of an average deaf child that is born in that country? This is what the indigenous hands, the indigenous voices, is concerned about. Having looked at the existence of Adam Rabe sign language long before the emergence of Ghanaian sign language, which is today dominating the deaf community, which is today the language of education um, as much as it has developed, which has been so much referred to as a dialect of American Sign Language by even scholars and users of the sign language. What is the future of, of sign language in that country? And what is the future of indigenous sign language in that country? We are going to wrap it up here today about Ghana. Um, we have looked at the briefly the language situation, the sign language situation in Ghana. We touched when Adam Robert's sign language was there and when Ghanaian Sign Language came through the work of Dr. Andrew Foster. And we are very much going to be looking at the works of Dr. Andrew Foster from one country to the other, from one country to the other. The one thing I wanted to point out is Dr. Foster understood the importance of communication and the importance of language, especially sign language, to the deaf children. And that was why he introduced the manual method of teaching deaf people, which we're going to be seeing as much as long as we go on in this study. Thank you for uh, spending these few uh, minutes with me in this program, Indigenous Hands, the Indigenous Voices. We are hoping to continue to um, sound these um, educational and sometimes entertainment um, uh, news and information in this program for you all because we know as much as it is not um, something that many people cling on to our studies are very important and we encourage you to please continue to um, subscribe to our videos and send the videos to people that it will benefit all right I know I'm going to see you here again by next week don't go nowhere, stay safe and stay blessed. Bye.